Hello and welcome to Eclectic Classes. In this video we will learn about hazardous area classification. So let's move forward. Hazardous area classification plays a vital role in ensuring safety in industries where explosive atmospheres can potentially occur. This classification is necessary to prevent accidents and explosions caused by the presence of flammable gases, vapors, combustible dust, or other hazardous materials. Let's explore this concept in detail, listing and learning the different zones with practical examples that can be easily understood. Zone 0. Continuous Danger Zone Zone 0 is the highest level of risk in hazardous area classification. Think of it like being inside a petrol, gasoline, tank. In this zone, there's a continuous presence of explosive gasoline vapors, even the tiniest spark can lead to a massive explosion. Extreme caution is essential in Zone 0. The examples that align with Zone 0 are places where flammable gases or vapors are consistently present. This can include locations like the interior of gas storage tanks or areas with a constant gas leak. Such environments require stringent safety measures, including specialized equipment designed to minimize the risk of ignition. Zone 1. Occasional risk zone Zone 1 is a step down in terms of danger but is still considered hazardous. Picture a petrol station as an example of Zone 1. Explosive gasoline fumes, vapors might be present, especially when people are filling up their cars. It's not a constant danger, but occasional presence of gasoline vapors with a sparks can lead to trouble. In Zone 1, it's crucial to be aware of the potential for occasional exposure to flammable gases or vapors. Areas like chemical processing plants or fuel transfer stations fall under this category. To maintain safety, specific equipment and procedures are employed to minimize the risk of ignition sources. Zone 2. Safe most of the time zone Zone 2 represents a lower level of risk compared to zones 0 and 1. This zone includes environments where the presence of flammable gases or vapors is unlikely during regular operations, but there's a slight chance of it occurring sporadically. A typical example would be household kitchens with gas stoves, where the risk of gas leakage is minimal. However, safety precautions and specialized equipment are still necessary to address potential hazards. Till now we learned about Zone 0, 1 and 2. These zones have been defined by IEC 3 more zones that is Zone 20, Zone 21 and Zone 22 are defined in ATEX Directive, Atmospheric Explosibles, and are mainly followed in Europe. Even IEC has also included these zones based on combustible dust presence. Let's dig a bit deeper. Zone 20. The dust explosion zone This zone is best exemplified by settings where combustible fine dust particles are consistently present and can easily ignite. Consider a woodworking shop filled with sawdust suspended in the air at all times. However, any small spark in this environment can trigger an explosion. Zone 20 is typically associated with industrial settings where dust is a constant hazard. Facilities like grain silos or flour mills, where combustible dust is ever-present, fall into this classification. The ongoing risk necessitates the use of specialized equipment that prevents the generation of sparks or heat, which could lead to an explosion. Zone 21. The occasional dust zone Zone 21, on the other hand, is characterized by the occasional presence of combustible dust. In these environments, dust settles periodically, and if a spark occurs, it can lead to a hazardous situation. Think of a scenario where dust might accumulate in a particular area intermittently. It's like a space where dust settles on the floor or surfaces now and then, much like your home gathering dust over time. In specific situations, such as storage areas with infrequent dust buildup, a spark could pose a problem. Zone 21 examples include settings where dust accumulation isn't constant but can occur over time. Locations like woodworking shops, where dust may intermittently settle, or construction sites where dust may collect in certain areas, fall into this category. Safety precautions are still necessary to manage the occasional risk of dust-related explosions. Zone 22 is an area where the presence of combustible dust is not expected to be frequent or long-lasting. When it does occur, it will usually be a temporary condition. 
Examples of these zones are pharmaceutical companies which are generally maintained clean but during long run of production dust gets accumulated in generally clean area. Similar situation may arise in paper packaging industry and during long running time, paper dust could get deposited in generally clean areas. These also could be potential hazards. In summary, hazardous area classification is essential for ensuring safety in environments with potentially explosive atmospheres. These zones, ranging from Zone 0 to Zone 21, help categorize the degree of risk and guide the use of specialized equipment and safety protocols. Understanding these zones and the associated risks is vital to maintaining a safe working environment and preventing accidents and explosions in industries with potentially hazardous materials. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Kindly press the like button and bell icon. Do subscribe our channel. Let me know your views about the video in comment section. Do mention any topic which you want me to cover in comment section. Thank you.